Hey guys, welcome to Hackdoor Hacking Tutorial. In this tutorial on OWASP Top 10, we are going to talk about cross-site scripting. Now, cross-site scripting is also known as XSS. And XSS flaws occur whenever there is an application that includes an untrusted data in a new web page without proper validation or escaping. It might also occur when you know uh, an application updates an existing web page with the user supplied data and this data is not validated or escaped for scripts. Now cross-site scripting allows an attacker to execute scripts in the victim's browser that can either hijack the sessions, deface websites or even redirect users to a malicious website. Now let's see how actually an XSS attack works. Now for an XSS attack to work, we need the user supplied input to be reflected back on the web page. So let us see on what field on this page we can get our user input reflected back on the screen. So let's look at the search field, let's type test and see what results we get. So we definitely have a juice shops juice here, but we also see whatever input we have given in the search field is reflected back on the web page. Let's try typing hack go here. So if you see the user supplied input is reflected back on the screen, which is the web page. Now let's check if this is escaped for any script characters or not. Now when you are testing for cross-site scripting or XSS, you can use this particular cross-site scripting tester. Now this is a very basic JavaScript payload which basically means that it's going to pop up a box which is an alert box which has a digit one in it okay and the script is an opening and closing javascript tag so let's try inserting this tag in the search field and see what happens you see that we get an alert box with one written in it now getting this one popped up is not what an attacker would do but an attacker would do more sophisticated attacks where he might hijack your sessions or even redirect you to a malicious site. Now let us look at a few more JavaScript payloads. If you look at this payload, this payload basically will give the same alert box, but this time it is also going to reflect the domain that we are on. Let's try putting it in the search field. And if you see, we have the domain popped up. The next payload is basically an opening tag of script, a closing tag of script. These two tags basically mean that this is a JavaScript start and a JavaScript end. Now we are going to pop up the cookie for the user. Now if you have noticed that we are logged inside juice shop and if we insert the script, if you look at this, we have our cookie popped up to us. You see that? Now this is how step by step we were able to get the cookie out of the web application by simply inserting JavaScript code, which was basically reflected back. Now, instead of an alert, you can also use confirm. Confirm is basically the same alert box, but sometimes, you know, alert might be blocked or might not work in certain cases. So this is just something that you can use. And if you look at this, this again gives you the output of the cookie. Now in the later tutorials, when I explain, you know, how you bypass, you know, the web filters, the web application firewalls for cross-site scripting, I'm also going to cover some of the HTML tags that can include the JavaScript. For now, let me just show you how an SVG, which is basically an HTML tag, works with the cross-site scripting. So if I insert this HTML tag here with JavaScript embedded in it, I can see the same alert coming up. Now in the later tutorial or probably the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how an attacker can use this vulnerability to actually hijack your session, steal your cookie or even redirect you to a malicious site or even deface your site. Now thanks for watching guys. Please do follow us and subscribe to our channel. It really motivates us to make more videos for you. And thanks for listening and as always, God bless you all. Thank you.